the structure, the validation logic is in this bottom, the bottom uh, linear bottom part. And what you'll see what happens here is if I pause it and you look in the best genomes window, you'll see the first, okay, the first thing to let you in, I should have told you this, this key validator, the validator steps are basically like this. The string needs to be length 10, the first character needs to be a 4, and then the next three characters need to be an interdependent sequence of characters based on um, some Boolean operators. And then the next four characters have to be 4, 5, 6, 7, and the last two characters have to be 0, 3. These last two zero threes are brute force, and that's going to make a big difference because there's really no information to be gained from that, so it takes a little longer to brute force. But brute forcing two characters in a 10 string is uh, a lot better than brute forcing all 10 of them all at once. So we continue on and go ahead and pull up the, the actual target application so you can see the genomes are actually going to, they're actually being pushed through there. Uh, the next thing it's going to be trying to do, it got, a, it got a string of length 10, so the GA is going to remember that. It's going to say, okay, we got to that node with 10, so we've learned that we want to remember that, and that's kind of the intelligent part. Next thing it looks for is a 4, which it hit a 4 there, and you, now you see all the best genomes have a 4 as they continue going. After that, it's going to continue pushing, and it hits the next three characters, which are that interdependent relationship. Once it does that, the best genomes are going to remember that and it continue pushing forward. The next thing it's looking for is the four, five, six, seven sequence. But what's interesting is because those, those, the second, third, and fourth character, they're interdependent. There's multiple combinations of them. So every now and then a mutation operator will mutate one of the genomes and just hit upon three different characters. And if you look in there, you'll see for instance, three characters are staying the same, and then there's a, a different one that'll pop in. But uh, that's another valid string. So it'll continue going on here. It's going to look for the four, five, six, seven. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Say up to here. So now, if you look in the best genomes window, you see there's a four, five, six, and it got the seven. So it's made it almost all the way to the target. You see the green nodes are all the way to the target, except for that very last node. The, the validation logic on that very last node are, is the zero 03. The two characters have to be a zero 03. It's just a one comparison and one node, so it's a brute force link two, um, which takes a little longer. Basically, it's reducing to a brute force search now. But like I said, it's better to brute force on just two of those 10 than all 10. On average, it should take less time. So if we look at it, it keeps going. What will happen eventually if it hits it? OK, at this point, this genome, there has been a genome that found it, probably mutated the 0, 03. And if you look, you'll see that genome has listed in red, which means it made it additionally further on the path. And it's also reached the target, so it's also in blue. So there we have a valid string, a four, uh, three combination, and then the four, five, six, seven, and then the zero, three. So Sidewinder was able to successfully evolve a string to pass this key validation. And it did it in a relatively short amount of time um, when you compare it to what a brute force search of 10 characters, each of which can be almost 100 different characters. So you're looking at like, what, 100 to the 10th? Um, and this didn't take very long. It does run a lot slower in this recorder program, I've noticed, and the shake, it shakes the graph around. So it actually runs, probably it could do this in maybe five minutes, five to 10 minutes, whereas the recording is like 20. The recorder stops the execution and takes snapshots, I guess, of the screen. So that's that one. Let's go ahead and get out of there and take a look at the other target, which is a little more interesting. This target is a TFTP server. It's called TFTP 2000. It's available online. Um, you can download it. There's a little bit of information. It does have two string copies in it that are, are vulnerable. Um, it's, it's already been shown that those are vulnerable to a buffer overflow. 
So it makes it kind of an interesting target. Plus, it's a real-world TFTP server. I think it's pretty wide, widespread use. I don't know why, because it's got those vulnerable API calls. So it's a simple server. It uh, listens on the network. It accepts packets. It's going to try and parse the packet to see if it's a valid request, and then it's going to service the packet. Um, the goals here for Sidewinder are twofold. We know that it has the vulnerable API calls, the string copies. Those are documented. So we're interested, maybe we can hit those string copies. Can we reach them? Can we get to them? Um, the second goal, which is also interesting, is can Sidewinder evolve the packet structure of a valid TFT packet? Now, the grammar we use for this program is a little bit different. Since we have to send packets over the network, we need to be able to represent bytes, uh, like a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3. You can't do that with printable ASCII because a 0 is like a 74, I don't know, it's somewhere in there, 23. So the grammar is a bit different. This grammar will produce groupings of 3. It will produce 000, 001, all the way up to 128. It has 128 terminals plus 2 extras. Um, once that, that incoming string comes into Sidewinder, it's going to group it off by three, convert it to an integer, and put it on an unsigned character. That's going to build the packet that it can fire over the network. And that way we can represent bytes, which are required because the TFTP packet protocol specifies that you have to have bytes as delimiters. And the opcode is also you know, a byte. So uh, for this program, the source and the target, we're going to put the source right on the receive. Um, because that's where we're interested and start tracking it. We're going to choose the destination node as a node that's right after all the validation logic. Um, so right after it's determined that there is a valid packet and the TFTP server would then try and send a reply. Um, that's where we want to try and get at this point. I, I've talked about the, the grammar is a little bit different. So we'll go ahead and fire this one up and see what happens. Again, we're going to have to choose the target application, the, the graph, and the grammar. In this case, we're running a service, so we need to tell Sidewinder it's a service, so it can start that service up. It's a little bit different to start the service. Now this program, go ahead and maximize. This, this real world program is a lot larger. It's got, you can see all the nodes in the drop down list here almost a thousand nodes or so. So it does take a little while longer to build paths and set breakpoints. Even, even though the, um, the depth for search is pretty fast, it still takes a little longer. And we've disabled the graph, <coughs> excuse me, because again, the, the image file is just so big, it can't scroll and stuff. But it's still going to do it. It's going to set all the breakpoints here. And then we we'll go ahead and press play. Um, once it starts going, the validation, so you know it ahead of time for this TFTP, is there are five valid TFTP packets. The shortest one is the ACK. I think it's two bytes opcode and a two byte sequence number. So this particular server, the first thing it does is check for a length four. Um, once the packet's length four, it's going to check for a valid opcode. Go ahead and pause it. Once it sees a valid opcode, it's going to go ahead and check for some sort of character string, which is a file name. That has to be terminated by zero byte. And then a transfer mode string, also terminated by zero byte. And we see it already started up here. And it's hit the beginning stuff. Every genome is going to hit the receive. Um, so that's a given. So the first thing it's going to do is try and find fours length four. These best genomes, three characters represent one byte, so 12 is actually length four. And it's going to go on once it is, and it's going to try in that order. It's already found a packet that's length four, so it's looking for valid opcodes. So I'm going to go ahead and skip forward. This one runs a little slower, mainly because the, the receive is not working right now, so we have to sleep. If we go up here, say, I don't see anything interesting in the window there. 
Okay, this packet now, if you see that, oops. This packet that's in red, this genome has made progress. And the reason it did so is because if you look at the first two bytes, it's a zero three. That's a valid opcode. I think it's a data or an ACK. So now Sidewinder's figured out a valid opcode. It's gonna continue to use that, that knowledge and create mostly input strings that already know that so it doesn't have to figure it out again. So you see a lot of the best genomes continue to be valid opcodes by all the 003s. Zero, zero I guess there it just found a different opcode, a two, which I think is a right request. And that genome hit further in the path. Over here we have what's a little interesting. We keep track of the code coverage. So just so we know, you know, how many of the uh, nodes we've been hit from the subgraph that we're looking at. So it's found an opcode, it's found a, an additional opcode. It's found two opcodes now, and it's still looking. What it's trying to do now is reach further into the graph, which is the file name, terminated by a null byte. And eventually it will get that, let's see. Okay, we have some more here. Uh, it's on a write request or a read request, which is a one. So if you see zeros and a one, that's a, a read request. Zeros and a two is a write request. There's a bunch of random characters in there. And then if you look in the middle, I don't know if you can see that on these slides, but it does have random characters and then it has a zero, 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 which is a terminating null byte, which means it's found an opcode, some random file name, and a null terminator. So it's, it's gotten almost all the way through a, a valid packet. The only thing it needs to find now is put in a transfer mode string, uh, like NetASCII or Octet, and then a final terminating null character. And then it's found its target, and it's managed to create a valid TFTP packet. One of the interesting things to note is the grammar doesn't, the grammar that we fed into this doesn't have any, it doesn't have any information encoded in it as to what a valid TFTP packet looks like. All the terminals are just bytes. So Sidewinder is actually learning the, what a valid TFTP packet looks like. And it's continuing to fire those into the program. So we fast forward a little more. And it plays with the length, it changes the file gnome strings. Somewhere right around here. Okay, so blue again means that some genome has reached the target. And it's switching back, it's switching back and forth between read requests and write requests. Um, and then there's a file name, there's a null terminator, and there's some transfer mode string, and then a null terminator. So all these blue representations are valid TFT packets. And you start to see a lot of them pop up. What's interesting is the, once the, the population will start to converge. So all the genomes in the population will start to converge upon valid TFT packets. And the only, the structure is maintained for the most part, except your, your random mutation. Um, the structure is maintained. What's changing here is the file name is changing and uh, the transfer mode could change, but we put those in the grammar and that one's over because we know obviously we're dealing with a TFTP server we know that we need those terminals in there. That's just a gimme. So those are two demos we have.